It's a very special uh, show, uh, mine and Holly's last one. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're examining our picks for the most notorious times TV presenters and news anchors in the UK caused massive controversy. We'll explore how this damaged their personal lives and once promising careers. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Two victims had come forward and the police had already interviewed him. Angus Deaton Good evening and welcome to the show, and indeed anyone is that wants it. After making his name in comedy, in 1990, Angus Deaton switched tracks by becoming the first main presenter for the comedy panel show of I Got News For You. And for 12 years, it was a success for Deaton, bringing him many plaudits along the way. But in 2002, the defunct newspaper News of the World detailed Deaton's private life. He reportedly used illegal substances and the services of sex workers. Angus was the best lover I've ever had and you didn't pay her. <laughs> Deaton continued working on the show. However, further allegations of an affair while his partner was pregnant forced the BBC to drop him. While he went on to present Hell's Kitchen and briefly for Would I Lie to You, Deaton's presenting career hasn't recovered. Peter Rowell I have to say, first of all, that was the fastest cup of tea I've ever seen made. I was quick, wasn't it? For years, Peter Rowell was one of the most famous broadcasters in the west of England due to his work on ITV West Country. So much so that he was a marquee name for turning on Christmas lights in towns. In 2011, Rowell caused mass panic when he didn't show up for work at BBC Radio Bristol. He was found soon after. Then the truth came out, as the handcuffs were slapped on him. Rowell had disappeared after the police raided his house and seized his computer. In 2012, Rowell admitted to 12 counts of assault on underage girls and 6 counts of owning obscene photos. He was sentenced to 6 years in prison. Rowell pleaded guilty to 12 charges of indecent assault between 1989 and 1995. Frank Boff Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking I couldn't possibly afford that. As one of the most legendary presenters in British history, Frank Boff has led beloved shows like Grandstand, Breakfast Time and Nationwide, as well as presenting for Football World Cups. Yet in 1988, his status was wrecked after the News of the World published this story. They detailed Boff had used illegal substances and attended explicit parties. This caused the BBC to fire him. It was then a bit of a shock when he appeared on the front of the News of the World. It got worse for Boff in 1992 when more reports came out of further incidents, ending his role as a rugby presenter for ITV. Boff did manage to find work again for travel shows and radio, but it was on a much smaller scale before he retired in 1998, ending his near 40-year tenure as a broadcaster. Tim Westwood. When I took Armick's car to the garage, it was straight embarrassing. After making his name as a popular radio DJ with stations like Capital FM and Radio 1, Tim Westwood was given the opportunity to front the US adapted car show Pimp My Ride UK for its original run. When that ran its course, Westwood returned to radio and started his own YouTube channel that featured interviews and clips from famous musicians. But in 2020, the wheels began to fall off his career, with allegations Westwood behaved inappropriately with female fans, which he denied. Now if I try to get out of it, who's to say how he's going to react? So I just submit to it. In 2022, the release of the documentary Tim Westwood Abuse of Power explored the dark side of the DJ as more allegations came out. Westwood was forced to step down from Capitol as the police investigation continued. This afternoon, step down from his weekly Saturday night radio slot on Capital Extra. After allegations, he abused his position in the music industry to exploit women who accuse him of predatory sexual behaviour. Martin Bashir. After working on Panorama for years, Martin Bashir's career took off into the stratosphere when he secured the royal family shattering interview with Princess Diana in 1995. How aware were you of the significance of what had happened to you? After all, you'd become Princess of Wales, ultimately with a view to becoming Queen. He further increased his celebrity in 2003 with shocking interviews with Michael Jackson. From there, Bashir went to the US to work 
before returning to the BBC in 2016. In 2021, he suddenly left the company, citing ill health. However, shortly after, the report that examined his 1995 interview with Diana was released. It showed Bashir had lied, spread smears, and created fake evidence to persuade the ostracised royal to speak to him on camera. That BBC employees lied and used fake documents to obtain the interview with my mother. While Bashir and the BBC apologised for the deceit, the backlash was massive. John Leslie. What are you going to miss most about us? Um, well, I think I'd say I'm, just, I'm going to miss, um, miss you, actually, more than anything. Bursting onto the TV scene as a host of Blue Peter in 1989, John Leslie soon picked up several high-profile gigs, especially in the late 90s with Wheel of Fortune and This Morning. It appeared that he would have a long, successful career, but then it fell apart in 2002. As I was found innocent on in all charges, I had hoped that the police would have been able to con conduct their investigation in confidence. After Ulrika Johnson released her autobiography, where she detailed the time she was assaulted, Matthew Wright named Leslie as the culprit on his show, while Wright later apologised that he got it wrong. Further women came forward with allegations against Leslie. As such, he was fired from this morning. In 2003, the charges were dropped. In 2017, Leslie was acquitted of another assault. Finally, in 2020, he was found not guilty in another trial. Stuart Hall. I knew we were in for mayhem, and I just laughed myself silly. That's him. Come on, Doug, I believe that you missed it. On the surface, Stuart Hall was a beloved figure in the world of broadcasting. After all, on top of presenting popular shows like It's a Knockout and A Question of Sport, he also worked as a journalist and sports reporter. In 2012, Hall's 53-year career was over, when serious allegations came out that he had assaulted children years ago. In 2013, he pleaded guilty to 14 charges against 13 victims. Will you apologise on camera to your victim? Excuse me. I have Excuse no comment to make at this stage. How do you no comment and no apology outside court. He was stripped of his OBE as he received a 15-month sentence. This lenient punishment caused outrage as the case was taken to the Court of Appeals. They doubled Hall's original sentence to 30 months, and additional charges in 2014 added another two and a half years. Hall was released in 2016. Philip Schofield. Uh, I, um, wait for this, made my first appearance as a This Morning presenter in this very studio in 1998. Nicknamed the Silver Fox, Philip Schofield was all over ITV programming for years. On top of his main duties as This Morning host, he also worked on Dancing on Ice, The Cube and the British Soap Awards. In 2020, Schofield announced he was gay and separated from his wife. In 2023, Rumours began to swirl about the presenter and his deteriorating relationship with long-term co-host Holly Willoughby. Then, he suddenly left this morning. Days later, Schofield admitted to an affair with an ITV employee. While he met the worker as a teenager, Schofield claimed the affair started when he reached 20. He lied to many people close to him, causing the destruction of several personal and professional relationships, forcing Schofield's resignation from ITV. Michael Barrymore. And now, here's Michael! Hello. Hello. Due to his presenting and comedy work on shows like Strike It Lucky, Kids Say the Funniest Things, and his self-titled show, Michael Barrymore was one of the most electrifying personalities in the UK. Yet while his career heightened, his personal life tumbled as addiction took over. In 2001, after hosting a party, Stuart Lubbock's body was found in Barrymore's swimming pool. On Friday night, he'd been at the Millennium Club in Harlow with friends, but just hours later, 31-year-old Stuart Lubbock was found unconscious in Barrymore's swimming pool. At the time of writing, nobody has been charged with Lubbock's murder. Barrymore's connection scared off TV companies from hiring him. He had a brief comeback with Celebrity Big Brother in 2006. However, that ended following his arrest and release in connection with Lubbock's case. Since then, Barrymore has made odd appearances and now focuses on his TikTok account. Rolf Harris. I mean, we go back a long time. Uh, what was it? Several weeks ago, wasn't it, when we first met? If he wasn't releasing songs or painting Queen Elizabeth II's official portrait, Rolf Harris could be found presenting shows like Animal Hospital, 
and Rolf's Cartoon Club. While born in Australia, Harris became a massive TV personality in the UK and was given several royal awards. Yet all that goodwill evaporated in 2013 when he was arrested as part of Operation Yew Tree, which was investigating his historical abuse crimes. He denies 12 charges of indecent assault dating between 1968 and 1986. In 2014, Harris was found guilty on 12 counts and sentenced to five years and nine months in jail. He was released in 2017. That same year, Harris was in court again on further charges. However, he was acquitted, while a later retrial failed to reach a verdict. Harris passed away in 2023. Which athletes who did their trade in the UK saw their careers have a dramatic downfall? Adrian Mutu, Mason Greenwood, Adam Johnson, Dwayne Chambers, Rufus McLean, or somebody else? Let us know below. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.